Alright, hey guys, Simon here, and we're doing a game design analysis of Amnesia The Dark Descent. Yes, Amnesia! Um, so people have asked me to play Amnesia before, and I've played it before, but I haven't recorded anything, mostly because I wasn't really ready. Um, but recently I think I've figured out why this game is good. I mean, it's taken me quite a long time to do that. Uh -huh. So let me just, just lay it out for you. I think this, I think Amnesia is a successful horror game because it encourages you to be scared. It punishes you for being brave and rewards you for being scared. So that's my hypothesis, if you will. So let's just keep that in mind and analyze the game according to that as we go through. And just, you know, as you start the game, before you start, there's actually messages on the screen telling you that you're not supposed to fight the enemies. That's important too, because in most games you would fight the enemies. In this game, you're really not meant to. So that's the first difference, and I'll get into more detail about that, why that's important to the game later on. I think you guys are aware in some way that that's important, but I guess I'll just lay it out just to make sure that, you know, we understand what's going on here. Um, alright, let's just go into it. Is there anything else? Oh, no, no, let's just go into it. We're gonna start a new game. I just started it before to configure the mouse and everything, but let's just see what we have here. So, yeah, keep that in mind. It rewards you for being scared, or it rewards you for behaving as though you were scared, even if you're not. Don't forget, some things mustn't be forgotten. The shadow hunting me. I must hurry. My name is Daniel. I live in London at... at... Uh, Mayfair. What have I done? This is crazy. Don't forget. Don't forget. I must stop him. Focus. My name is... I am... Daniel. I am Daniel. So mustn't forget, I am Daniel. Those are the... Like, now that I've played the game before, I know that that's the important stuff you need to remember. That you are Daniel, the player. You're the player, the, the, the name's Daniel, and... You mustn't forget. But anyway, I guess we'll... Go through the story as we go through it in the game. So uh, I'm just gonna pause a little bit once we stand up. Because obviously I need to set myself to busy. Usually I don't, because I don't have many friends, but uh, I'll be right back. Alright, so... Alright, let's just start. Um, I've turned up the... Let's see... Uh, memento has been added to your journal. For quick access to your memento, press M, J and M. Make sure to check these whenever you get stuck. See, this is important. I think... If you remember my Penumbra playthroughs, th this game is made by the same people. I don't think... I think this game introduces the mechanics to the player a lot better than Penumbra. The, the, just overall, this game is a lot better than, than that series. And obviously they've learnt a lot from Penumbra to be able to do this. So let's see, journal, notes, no notes, diaries, no diaries, mementos. Follow the liquid trail to find its source. See, the game tells you what you're doing, man. Like, in a way, it's a bit... It almost seems like cheating, right? Like how how you how would Daniel would know this? See, Daniel wouldn't know this. The game is just telling you, the player, that that's what you're meant to be doing. And that's good because usually, if the player doesn't know what he's doing, he's just gonna wander around and get angry a lot. So there's all sorts of parallax mapping going on there. That's so technically the game is pretty impressive. Anyway, let's just walk through the game. I assume that most of you guys have played this before, so I'm just just to you know tell you that I've played this before as well. So I guess I'm not going to worry too much about you know the game itself. Just just think about the concepts of horror and gaming, and obviously the like the the, the typical stuff is here the the old castle. You know that that's a fairly you know, well-used trope in horror stories. There's the... 
you know, there's the usual scary things, the darkness, the shadows, the loud noises. Hold down left mouse, hold down left mouse and use the mouse in order to uh, move the mouse in order to move the door. Right mouse to throw the door. Oh, you can throw. Except you can't throw. Did it say right mouse to throw it? I can't do it. Well, never mind. Don't really have to do it. Um, hmm. And uh, it's got this motion blur thing as well. It's meant to emphasize your vulnerability in a way, I guess. Like, you, you're kind of disoriented. You can see the screen's tilting a little bit. That's pretty cool, too. I usually dislike motion blur. Tinder boxes are used to light candles and other light sources in the environment. The current amount of tinder boxes is shown in the inventory tab. So teaching you these <laughs> I love this sanity and health. I love this thing here. Uh general tinder boxes, that's good. I've also turned the brightness up just a little bit more than it's meant to be, mostly because the videos usually turn out darker than, than I see it. So I'm actually playing this with quite a bit of light, and so the screen shaking, this strange gusts of wind, those are again fairly familiar horror tropes, but having those things don't necessarily make a horror game. I don't know how many other horror games you play. I played Ellen Wake, obviously I've played Penumbra, and I guess we'll, we'll see if we can meet our first enemy before I start discussing the nature of enemies in horror games, so we're kind of falling down a bit. So again, that's emphasizing your vulnerability, right? It's emphasizing that you're weak and you're not doing very well. And you're also moving quite slowly. So things like that. I guess that's a bit of a jump scare. It's not too bad. Not too loud, I don't think. And jump scares are, are fairly sensitive things as well. Like people usually don't like them. Like they work, they shock people. But usually, it's not. It's not clever, you know. It's usually ends up being quite dumb, and if we don't do it right, then it ends up being quite stupid as well. So you can hear the player, you know, gasping a little bit and the door randomly opening. So these are all fairly typical things, and I guess if you're scared easily, then you'd be, you know, surprised by these things. Again, I've played this game before, so none of this stuff is particularly surprising. But it does set the tone, right? It set the tone as you being in a place where you're supposed to be scared. We haven't gotten to any serious things yet, and <laughs> we walk quite slowly, so this might be a long playthrough. And it's really disorienting, like the way the... What's on it? Nope. The way the, the camera's swaying back and forth a little bit, look at that. Should I talk about the architecture? I mean, the architecture is not that interesting. I mean, look, it's, it's stone. Like, even the... This, I don't think that's structurally accurate. Maybe it is, I don't know. It's a stone castle. I don't think there's too much to say about it. Corridors and rooms, as it were. I don't think this is even a proper castle. Like, it's just a series of corridors and rooms. Not sure, though. But let's keep moving forward. Let's keep getting scared. I think there's one more thing here. The sound of someone running. Look at the screen, like it's it's squeezing close. How do you do that? I mean technically it's quite good as well, right? Like doing these effects with the screen. Like it's oh I, I know what it is. It's um it's changing the field of vision. Like the angle. It's kind of widening that, just to make it so the world seems like it's squishing together. I think we're supposed to be claustrophobic? I mean, this thing's swinging in the air. 
Holy crap. Yeah, look, like the walls are closing in on you. The effect is so good, look at that. It's pretty effective. I don't know, I'm not claustrophobic, so I don't I don't really care about this. But it's interesting, right? So if you're a claustrophobic person, then you feel it. And you randomly fall down. <laughs> <laughs> See, and then the corridors widen out. That, that's really good. I don't. I'm not sure exactly how they did. It. I think it's the field of vision. It could be some other things. But that's fairly funny, right? See, so it's randomly fall down. Again, reiterating the fact that you're quite weak and vulnerable. Like they're telling you the same things over and over again, just to make sure you don't miss it. And that's important too. Like sometimes. And a door opening again by itself. Like sometimes the game will, or sometimes some games will just tell you things once, and you'll miss it. Like important information. If it's important, you really need to tell the player the information several times, just to make sure they don't miss it. I mean, if you, you, you say, "Oh, well, the player missed that inf that information. It's their fault." Yeah. Well, if the player is not enjoying the game. Maybe it's the player's fault, but it's the game designer's problem because they're the ones who want to sell more games, so... Anyway, there's nothing there. So we're still leaning forward, back and forth. I know what happens in there. That's interesting too, look, that's brightly lit. In fact, I think there's brighter, there's warm colours in there as well, look at that. Look at the colour of that carpet, in contrast to this here, like it's black. It seems faded out, that seems bright and high contrast. Let's just leave that for a little bit, I want to see what's in here. I think there's something here? Nope. Clothes. <laughs> this is funny, right? Oh look, bright room! It's a bright room, let's come in here. Nope. <laughs> Beware! When standing in the darkness, your sanity will slowly drain. Turn on lights in the environment using tinder boxes or search for other sources of light. And so when you're standing in the dark, you go crazy. Which is fun. Should I use a tinder box here? No, I'll just save my tinder boxes. Just because. So, so before it was unnaturally bright, and now it's unnaturally dark. Look at that. How is it that you can't see the other wall like that? It's literally unnaturally dark. See, I don't even remember this stuff. Look at that. The light doesn't actually penetrate into the room. So that's pretty cool. So the, the lighting engine is obviously not just natural physics. Like when you're inside you can see things, but only to a certain distance. When you're outside, you can't see anything at all. Look at that. That's actually quite impressive. I mean, the, obviously the, the the light engine is is custom, and they're very carefully cut. Look at this. How is that even possible? Is it not physically possible? Like it's this dark, but if you close the door and you stand inside, you can somehow see everything. So they they've done some pretty clever things with the light as well, which is cool. It's not just in the high dynamic range lighting, there's actually other th other tricks going on. Hmm. And that's interesting too. Like you know, it was basically a trap, right? So it was a room that looked bright and cozy with the warm colors and everything. And then when you walk in, it's a trap, and then everything's turned dark, and you get scared. That's interesting. I don't know how that contributes to the rest of the game though, like, you're supposed to not trust things that look safe? I guess that emphasizes your, you know, again, emphasizes the danger and vulnerability and all that. I don't think that actually contributes to the way you play the- I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind, I'll keep that in mind, whether this game repeatedly punishes you for going into safe areas. I don't think that's the case. 
anyway, so we're in no immediate danger as well, as you know. If you've played the game, like we don't see enemies until quite late. Witnessing unsettling events will reduce your sanity, it can be increased by completing puzzles and making progress. So if you see strange things, you'll go crazy. If you stand in the light, you'll go less crazy. And then when you solve puzzles, you'll also go less crazy. I don't remember which way we're going. And in some games, in Call of Cthulhu, I don't know if you remember, if you go too crazy, you actually will just kill yourself. In this game... <laughs> cockroaches. Are they cockroaches or are they some other things? I don't know what they are. Some sort of bugs. Again, if you're scared of bugs, you should be creeped out. I'm not particularly scared of bugs. Well, not, not in-game bugs. I am slightly creeped out by real-life bugs, but I'm quite quick to just kill them. So, uh... That's how I deal with my fear of bugs, killing things. True story. Anyway, so there's bugs, and there's strange noises, and opening doors, and gusts of wind. I mean, it's all fairly familiar tropes, again. But you can put all these things into a game and still not have it scary. I don't, I, I'm, I'm, my arg I'm arguing here that that's not actually what makes this game scary. Although, if you're scared easily, that might actually work for you. Like random wind, earthquakes. I mean, this doesn't do anything to me. Maybe it does something to you. If you are, uh, you know.